uh, then they sent me to the Burt, to, let's see, uh, to Burt, Nova Scotia. Yeah. It's just across from uh, uh, sir, to Halifax, Halifax, Halifax yeah. what I'm trying to think of. So they sent the Americans over there to meet this train. That was the first place it stopped. Yeah. Out of Washington. Yeah. So uh, this one guy, who he was, I don't remember now, wanted to go in the Marine Corps. So we go in the Marine Corps, talk to those guys, and I didn't like anything about talking to those rough guys. So finally I got to the, I was a sergeant pilot, proud of it, and uh, always flew as captain, though, you know. I, I had good flying grades and poor, poor ground grades. I didn't know what the weather was going to do. So uh, uh, my daddy was in the... Uh, Army Air Force, World War One, and my two uncles were. So when I get to the Army, uh, oh, then we go. They sent us in the Navy thing after the Marine Corps, and both of those would made us officers, engine in the Navy, and second lieutenant in the uh, in the Marine Corps. So I get to the Army Air Force, and they say, well, we'll make you a uh, sergeant pilot in the Army Air Force. And I said, I'll take it. And that's when uh, I got my uh, U.S. sergeant pilot, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, rank, you know, sergeant. And I was very proud of it. Did they, at that time, did they let you know in advance they were coming, or did they say you, you had to transfer, or you might lose citizenship, or did they... No, put, we didn't have to transfer. Uh, did they put on you under any... But they didn't. They went on over. Most of them got killed, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Why did they decide to stay? I mean, was there any pressure to transfer or anything, or no? No. Uh, no, it was a very clean deal. It just nice as everybody, or both sides, just nice as they could be. Uh-huh. No, we didn't have to transfer. And why did the other fellas decide to stay... What was their reasoning that they stayed? Well, most of them were, that I remember, were eager to get to combat. Uh-huh. And I was too, but I, I was also eager to to please my folks and uh, get back an American yeah. deal. Yeah. So they, when you went through the transfer train and then you were sworn into the uh, Army Air Corps. On the train. Then uh, you were officially in the Army Air Corps then. What did they do with your, when did you give up your RCF uniform then? Did you? Well, I didn't want a hard to give it up because uh-huh. it's nicer than American uniform. <laughs> And I caught a train to Maxwell Field, Alabama. Now, did all the transferees, they, did they ride the train down at the same time? Uh, all the fellows that trans- out, yeah, a whole bunch of them. So, so when you... Were going, going out in, in squirts, there weren't a whole bunch. There wasn't 50 at a time or anything. Uh-huh. Just, just a uh, few guys, and immediately you'd know who they were. No, and, and I think they go to different places, too, as I remember. But uh, some reason they sent me down there. Oh, yeah. that was Southern, I guess. Uh-huh. And uh, then, uh, no, I remember being on the base quite a while. They wondered what the hell we were doing on the base. There's four of us. And we got our pictures in the Montgomery paper, and uh, everybody wondered what we were. And finally, they sent us over and got us some uniforms. And I don't think I ever did sew my, sew my uh, stripes on there. Were you still wearing your RCF uniform when you were headed down there? Or oh, yeah. It? Yeah. And, and I had it for a week after I got there. Uh, I see. And, and at the time you transferred uh, up in Canada, did they did every, did you ride the train all the way across the country while they were picking up others, or did they ship you? Did you? How did that work when? Uh, no, that train uh, was pretty pretty well handled. It started out and headed right for Maine and uh, on down the east coast. I see. And then when you got down there and they said, "Who the heck? What the heck are you doing in this Canadian that's, uniform?" That's right. That's what exactly <laughs> happened. <to us. laughs> what did they figure you were? Uh, what, 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 what did? What were their comments? Oh, they they thought it's funny. And we'd, we'd all ask us questions and uh, listed men. Of course, by this time we had our, our stripes sewed on, uh, our upside down stripes they called them. <laughs> And uh, then they got a kick out of us, you know. And well, they start checking us out on AT sixes, just uh-huh. make sure we got some flying time in. Uh-huh. And I remember I flew a BC one A, which was an AT six, but it was uh, dressed up somewhere or another. I forget what it was. Uh-huh. They sent me to, to uh, Wright Field, Wright Patterson, to be a, I was a test pilot. And I enjoyed that very much because I got to fly a lot of different kind of airplanes and I had a good reputation and I'd take those fighters up and do loops with them and slow rolls and I had a pretty good reputation there. Got to, oh, I got to fly a B-29 and it was as far as I 
know it was about the only B-29 in the States. It's before they got, uh, you know, ready to go. But they were testing them up there, so I got to know the pilots and the uh, civilian pilots. And uh, they let me go fly on the co-pilot seat with them. So that was really something. That was the biggest airplane I ever saw in my life. Yeah. And, uh, when you were with the hundreds, did you run into any RCAF types there or, uh, when you were there? And or anyone over when you were in England? Uh, did any of them wear the RCF wing on their U.S. uniform? Did you run into many? Oh, I certainly did. That's the wings I worked for. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Well, I ran into a lot of them. That, uh, and then we'd always they'd give us something together, you know, and we'd be in a bar or on the train. Or, yeah. Yeah, I met quite a few. And what did the fellow say uh, when you got uh, over to England uh, and you're wearing a U.S. uniform and you got this other wing? What did the, the fellows that didn't have one that trained through the U.S. system? What did they think of you fellas with these two wings? No, you talking about an ex-Canadian guy? Well, a anyone in general, when they saw uh, this extra pair of wings on the U.S. uniform, well, what was their reaction? Most of them had seen enough of those wing wings around the country on the RAF -R boys uh, that uh, they knew what they were. And uh, they didn't. I had a lot of people ask me, why do you got two pair of wings on? And what was your answer? What would you well, I told them I was originally from the RCAF uh -huh. and proud of it. Yeah. No, I really was. I still am. Uh -huh. and, uh, not that the, uh, well, one thing that I got to do, I always had a good flying record. Like I said, I was kind of a dumbass as far as school went. But uh, it picked me among the first group to go from uh, Tyndall Field to down to see the Smyrna Tennis. Uh, let's see. Uh, Florida. I can't think of names anymore, but anyway, they checked. They, I was the first enlisted man in the history of the Air Force to check out. I was B-17 as a pilot, captain, and which was unusual, and I was proud of that. Still am. Yeah. And uh, one time they signed me a lieutenant colonel, uh, West Pointer as a co-pilot. I thought I'd faint when he walked in there. Got in that right seat. <laughs> What did they, uh, did, did any of the higher brass, uh, when they looked at your record and said you were up in Canada, did they, did they say anything? Why did you go up there? Did they question you at all on? No, I think the word had gotten out about us by this time. And uh, i tell you what, though, I think some way they recognized my ability. And I feel now, well, all these years, 60 years, I feel that I got a little better training somewhere or another, or they pounded in my head better, and uh, they were nicer than any, you know, they kind of treated, treated cadets down here like a bunch of bub bubs of some kind, and, uh, but up there it was uh, like, well, for a while out of America, American instructor, an old boy from New York, he was a sergeant pilot too, he was, but he had a lot of flying time before, you know. And, uh, do you recall his name? Gosh, I don't. Uh, uh. Wish I did. And what, what, what did you say? What did he say to you? What was the conversation amongst Americans that were up there? What was the kind of the mood amongst them? And how did they, you know, when you found out this uh, another fellow was up there, American as well, was there any kind well, of camaraderie or any? Uh, no, wasn't much. They slept in the same barracks, yeah. ate the same tables, and, and uh, went to the same bar. And, chased around with the same girls and everything else. It was just, we were part of them. Mm -hmm. And they always treated us good. Yeah. And which I always appreciated that, too. Yeah. And I don't know, the Canadians, you know, they're not like the English. They're more like the, uh, the Yankee, anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm.